Hi everyone, this is my first video of 2024, so Happy New Year. Hope everyone's doing great. Wish you all the best in 2024. I hope you get out there and do something. Push your boundaries. Do something that might make you feel a little uncomfortable. Do some of that type 2 fun. I think you'll enjoy it and I think you'll find that it kind of just improves your life. Of course, have some of that type 1 fun and enjoy it, but you know what I'm saying. Get out there and push your boundaries. It'll just make you a stronger person in the end. All right, so if you're new to the channel, my name is Dean. I've been doing a ton of touring in the last few years, including a cross Canada trip, and I'm getting ready to do the Great Divide mountain bike route in July of this year as well. So big plans and a lot of things have happened already. I definitely always put my gear through the paces. So today I thought I'd come out and talk to you about my new custom made frame bags from Rogue Panda. All right, so let's talk about how I got here first real quick. I, I have had two other frame bags. I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail about them because I do have other videos on them. I'll put links in the description if you'd like to see my thoughts on those bags and why I've come to this bag as well. Um, my first bag was an Ortlieb four liter frame bag and no issues with it whatsoever except that the zipper was really hard to open. You can't open it really safely when you're riding, which is an issue. Um, the bag is very waterproof. Um, no issues there. And the other thing was that it's just one compartment. I've always wanted a um, two compartment bag. So that's why I then went to the Blackburn Outpost Elite frame bag, which is just under four liters. Um, seemed promising. It had the dual zippers on the, non on the drive side, a nice handy zipper on the non-drive side for your, your stuff you need throughout the day. Um, the main problem I had was that um, during a rainstorm, it filled up like a fish tank. So again, link in the description for that video if you want to check it out. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about that. Um, other people have had success with the bag. Those were, were my experiences with it though. So let's talk about the Rogue Panda frame bag and the Rogue Panda Rincon top two bag. All right, so how I ended up going with Rogue Panda is just doing research, looking for different companies to try. I'll be honest, there's several companies that I was very interested in. I just thought I would start with Rogue Panda. I like their ordering process, the ability to customize the bags um, in a lot of detail was something that really uh, was interesting to me. So that's why I went with Rogue Panda. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Rogue Panda, the company itself, um, give you a little insight into them and what they're all about. So the company Rogue Panda was founded, I believe, in around 24, 2015. Um, Nick, if you're watching this, um, please uh, let us know in the comments below if I'm wrong. They're based out of Flagstaff, Arizona. And um, I think how the name came about was, um, I think in around 2011, it's in the About Us section in their, on their website. But in 2011, I think Nick was riding home from an event, saw a sign that someone hacked, an electronic road sign that someone hacked that said Rogue Panda. Fast forward a few years later when he was trying to think of a company name for his business. Um, and I believe the business started out of just making bags for himself and then people he knew were requesting them. And then you know how that goes from there, kind of spawned the idea of Rogue Panda as a business. The one thing I like wor about working with a company like Rogue Panda is that it's a smaller company, so it's a more intimate feeling. You get to interact with the actual people instead of a big company where it's emails and uh, re you know robots calling you and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it was a really good experience dealing with Rogue Panda. Um, very small staff, Nick, and I think maybe eight or nine people, I could be wrong. Um, I'm, you'll see on the screen here that the staff and all that. So, but yeah, really good company and they really work with you and wanna help you out to make things right. All right, so let's talk about the bags themselves. Um, start with the material. The material is made um, out of a EPX 200 material from a company called Challenge Outdoors. It is made out of 100% recycled material. Um, as you'll see uh, on screen, um, I think it's like 20 plastic bottles for one square sheet of this stuff. So it's really excellently recycled. And um, going forward, Rogue Panda is going to make a move to use more of the X-Pack stuff. Um, this is EPX 200. It's a very durable, lightweight material with good ripstop qualities. So it's made out of a polyester fiber. Um, Challenge Outdoors has um, the EPX in different lines. Um, how Rogue Panda settled on the 200 was because it kind of fit that sweet spot of strength to lightness, durability to lightness, and that's where they ended up on that. Um, they, they do have bags that, are, that they're making in other materials, but as those materials run out, I do believe the goal is to go to the more of the, e the uh, EcoPack stuff and the more recycled stuff to be more environmentally friendly and help our planet out. 
So any of the edges of the bag that contact the frame in any spot are made out of 500D Cordura. And then as well between the Cordura is uh, sandwiched uh, some foam, which helps the contents of your bag, but also helps protect your bag as well. And helps deaden the sound of things rattling around in your bag as well as you're riding. As we know, um, when you're riding, just the vibrations and all the bumps have a way of really making things move around in your bag. So excellent little touch on them. The bag uses, I went with the all Velcro attachment. Um, the reason I went with that is because you can get the ones with the bolt-on feature, but from what I understand, that will make the bag less waterproof. And it only makes sense because they have to have holes in the bag to, to, for the bolts to go through. They do their best to waterproof around it, but um, from what I understand from other videos that I've watched on YouTube, that the bolt-on feature will allow a little more water to get in. And to me, that's more important. I do like the clean look of the bolt-on feature, and it's nice that they have it, but for me, I just want the more waterproof nature of the bags, and that's why I went with the straps. The Velcro is a really nice supple material. It won't uh, harm the frame at all, but a nice bonus is, is that uh, Rogue Panda, with every frame bag they send you, they will send you a roll of frame protector frame saver. So a really nice touch from the company. They don't have to do that. Uh, I never got any with any of my other bags. So I know a lot of it's mainly to do with if you order that late there, you can get this bag in a lace up feature on the top and uh, it can really rub on the paint and that would really be helpful for this. But uh, yeah, that's a really great touch uh, Rogue Panda. Thank you. All right. As I mentioned, the main point of getting these bags was the customization aspect of them. And I really like the different ability to do different things, different attachment possibilities, um, different zipper possibilities, different materials. The, the choices are kind of, they're not endless, but there are a lot of choices. And their, cust their custom uh, materials with their custom patterns is what they're really famous for and people absolutely love them. I don't know if they come in the uh, EcoPack material yet. Um, I believe that they were trying to use up material they had already, but yeah. Um, really good in the customization department. When you go on their website, you will see that you can click on, they have the picture of the bike, and then you can click on the, the different bags, whichever one you're looking for. When you go on there, you have lots of options as to what you want to do. Um, looking at the full frame bag here, you can see that you can go in, you can, can pick how many zippers you want, attachments, all that good stuff that really makes it kind of a personal thing. Um, and as far as selection for bikes, um, used to be where you'd have to send a picture of your bike with uh, ruler tape to it or do a cardboard cutout and send it to them. But Rogue Panda has been doing it for long enough now that they have a pretty extensive list of bikes and models. And you can just go right on there, find your bike, find the model size and all that. And then it's that easy for uh, Rogue Panda to go ahead and make your bag. All right, so one thing I wanna talk about with the frame bag and the waterproof aspect Probably the biggest point of failure on most frame bags as far as uh, water getting in is the zippers. These are made out of a number 10 YKK molded tooth zipper. In my opinion, one of the best zippers that you can have on any bag for this type of application. Um, you can get bags with the coil zipper on them and I have had some bags. I've been trying to hunt down the frame bag, the handlebar bag that fits on my Jones bars because it had the coil zipper and it almost failed immediately. And I was just never really confident about the, them being waterproof. It'd be quite often where you try to close the zipper and it would open in the middle, but the two ends would still be closed. So um, coil zippers just are too delicate in my opinion for this type of application. So while I haven't tested these bags out, I'm really confident. I've watched several videos on them on YouTube. Bikepacking.com has a really good video on the bags and um, they really test them hard throughout a whole summer and the bags came through with flying colors. So pretty confident on, on that aspect of them, uh, them performing well. Um, by all accounts, the, the material, um, one of the good things about them is when they get wet, the outside, it dries almost instantly. Um, any bag that if you get caught in a crazy, crazy, crazy storm, it will get some moisture in just through saturation, not necessarily through the zippers, and they will get some condensation inside. But um, yeah, I guess by all accounts, it just dries out really nice and uh, is a really good material as far as getting wet. All right, let's talk about the ordering process. Obviously, when ordering customized bags, it's going to take a little longer than just ordering mass-produced bags off, uh, off, the, off the internet. 
but um, I will say it was pretty good. Um, for me, it took about five weeks altogether from the very time I ordered it till when it showed up at my door. Considering I live in a different country, as I said, they're based in Flagstaff, I'm in Canada. That really wasn't that bad. Um, keep in mind, if you're ordering from a different country, it will take a little longer. Um, but the lead times themselves for Rogue Panda, for them to get making it, is usually about three to four weeks. So keep that in mind as well. Obviously, during the off season, if you have one where you live, that's the best time to order the bags. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people do, so also keep that in mind. It may be a busy time of the year for them as far as production goes as well. Another nice thing, if you are ordering from a different country, well, as far as my experience with ordering from Canada, is that um, the price that you have in your, uh, your final price that when you go to checkout is the price with all the duty fees, custom fees, and all that stuff. Instead of having to deal with that down the road and finding out that now you're spending even more, it's all rolled into the price of the bag. And any bag, I believe any um, foreign order um, under $300 does get free shipping as well. So I did not have to pay for the shipping. So I'm really excited about these bags. I'm really excited them to actually put them into some real world use this uh, spring, this coming uh, riding season. Like I said, everything initially, the zippers are just a dream to unzip. Um, everything works really good. I could never unzip the Ortliebs or even the uh, Blackburns with just one hand. So real good feature. The ring on top tube bag is just going to come in handy for, I'm going to kind of keep all my batteries and kind of electronic gadgets, uh, little microfiber cloth, stuff like that in here. And then on the other side where you'll see where the uh, side pocket is, that's where I'm going to keep my ID, money, um, stuff like that, uh, channel business cards. And then obviously in the main compartment, I'll figure exactly what I want to have in the main compartment going forward. But if you're not familiar with frame bags, don't be afraid to put a frame bag on your bike. If you're worried about aerodynamics and wind and stuff like that, you're loading the bike up anyway. So that really shouldn't be as much of a uh, concern. But anytime you can take the weight on your bike and center it and put it a little lower down, it's only going to make your bike handle better. So if you are getting a frame bag, try to concentrate on putting your heavier items in the frame bag to help stabilize the bike and feel, make it feel more planted. So I just wanted to let anybody that's kind of on the fence about a frame bag for those reasons, just to let you know that in my opinion, it has become actually one of my favorite bags on the bike. And like I said, for the reasons I mentioned, it is also a very important bag if you are gonna load the bike up. One thing I should have probably mentioned at the start of this video, video and I wanna make clear is I'm not sponsored by Rogue, Rogue Panda at all. Um, when I was thinking about ordering from them, I did reach out to the company to ask them a few questions. I did speak to Nick, the founder of Rogue Panda, um, and he was actually very kind um, after my questions, did give me a, a pretty uh, generous discount on the bags, but as well, very exciting. If you have any interest in buying these bags, um, I was offered an affiliate uh, link. So if you look in the description below, you'll see uh, my link for Rogue Panda. If you click on that link and buy any of their products, I get a very small portion of the sales will go to my channel. So if you are thinking about uh, buying their bags, guys, it would really mean a lot to me if you could use that affiliate link. It helps me out quite a bit. Um, I'm really still trying to save up for the Great Divide mountain bike road in July. So please, if you are thinking of buying their bag, check out that affiliate link in the description below. All right, like I said, I'm really pumped to get out there and put these bags through their paces for sure. Um, big exciting news. I think the big test is gonna come actually sooner than expected. I'm really hoping to go to Southern California to visit my sister and her family in February. And they live in SoCal, as I think I just mentioned. Um, they live in Temecula. And there's a bunch of really good routes right around there. Um, to those of you watching that I've been rambling on quite a bit about doing the SoCal Ramble, Desert Ramble, but um, after doing some investigation, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that as 85 to 90% of the route is in the desert and I would be okay, but there's two places where it goes into elevation and one is at Big Bear Lake, which is at about 8,000 feet, and they get about, I think it was like 150 inches of snow a year. So I looked up the temperatures from the time I'm gonna be there in the snowfall and that's gonna be a no-go. So I'm gonna to put together uh, just a chopped up route, maybe do the Stagecoach 400 and connect it on with something else. Maybe head further south towards the Mexican border. Who knows, options are kind of unlimited. I hope to stay for, I don't know, maybe a month, month and a half. So lots of time to spend with my sister and her family, but also to do some of uh, my adventuring stuff. 
All right, so you already heard me talk about SoCal and getting down there and doing that. And you've obviously heard me mention the Great Divide Mountain Bike Route several times. Um, I just want to take the time right now to kind of talk about that. If anybody watching would like to help me make this happen, um, for me, the biggest aspect of making the Great Divide happen is finances. So um, what I'm getting at is if anybody would like to help me make this happen, um, there's a couple ways you can do it, uh, several ways actually. Um, if you look beside the subscribe button below the video, you'll see a join tab. If you click on that, you, it'll take you where you can see different options to join the channel on a monthly basis. It is probably the best way, in my opinion, for you to help me out and to help the channel out for these adventures. But there's also um, buy me a coffee if you would prefer a one-time thing where you can go on and buy me one coffee, two coffees, whatever it may be. It's also a really good way and it came in very handy during the summer. And I was actually overwhelmed by the support I received when my uh, front rim melted. So yeah, those are the different options you can do. Um, yes, I don't receive 100% of the funds because each platform takes a little cut. But nothing too bad, really. But if you'd rather, you know, help me out and see all the money go to me, there's always an e-transfer and um, I can give you that info if you need it. All right. I think I've been long winded enough about this. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, found it informative and got some info. If you're thinking about the Rogue Pandas that was helpful to you in your decision making. But on that note, I think we're just going to wrap this up here. And the next time I speak to you, I'm hoping we'll be from sunny Southern California. So Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.